if you are being audited by the CDTFA, there are, are several little tricks that they play on you, the taxpayer, that violate CDTFA rules that they will use against you so that way you lose your rights and ultimately pay more in taxes. So I am currently going through a CDTFA audit with one of my clients, and I've been having several issues, and I'll detail those issues later. However, this is so flagrant and so obvious that I want to show you uh, some letters that I got in today. Um, so yeah, so let me just show it to you. I just want to show you how they do it. And so that way, if you are listening to this and you are being audited, if you are the tech, if you're a taxpayer or if you're a tax professional, you can be aware of these tricks. So that way you can circumvent them um, before they happen. Or if they do happen, you at least can identify it and take corrective action. Okay, so I am going to share my screen uh, with you right now. I'm going to try and make... Let me try and make me bigger, my beautiful face. Okay. What I've done is I have I have made this is some uh the final audit letter that a client got. I've whitewashed all the sensitive information out. So here's what happens: you get audited for your business and the CDTFA is sales tax in the state of California. I've taken out all the sensitive information. I have left my name and address in here because, <laughs> yeah, I'm I'm public, you know, nothing special about me. So here's what happens is you get something called the final audit results. The final audit results are mailed to you, to both to the taxpayer and the representative, and it gives you 10 days to review everything and then request a uh, a meeting with what they call the audit principal. The audit principal is the office manager. And so the way CDTFA works is they've got offices throughout California, and this is the head person that um, that monitors this. So this is the final um, the final results. You can see I, what I've done is I've highlighted it, and what you're going to notice is the date. You're going to notice the date. So that's the key thing is you have from the date of the final audit results, you have ten days. And you're probably thinking to yourself, "Geez, Adam, is there a rule?" Is there some guiding principle or is or am I making this up? So so let's head on over. So um, ooh, let me make myself bigger over here. Sorry for the inconvenience. I'm not sure how this will show up on the final version. Okay, so this is final uh, audit results letter defined. Okay, so let's just read this together because if you can read, apparently you're beyond and better than a lot of the auditors that work at this place. Okay, so a final audit results letter is sent to the taxpayer after the audit, re-audit, or FOB has been reviewed and is ready to be posted and billed or when the audit has been reviewed and staged to audit principal review. That is like the big kahuna. The big kahuna is this uh, principal auditor. To start the 10-day pro process to contact the audit principal, to discuss the audit uh, in terms of disagreement, okay? You have 10 days, right? So now what happens is, this is also very crucial. The final audit results letter is neither a notice of determination nor a notice of refund, meaning it's not final. Things are kind of still flowing and percolating. So meaning once you get this letter, you still have 10 days to go to the kahuna, the head boss, the jefe, the patrona, and say, hey, Let's let's talk more about this. Um, and it's crucial because these are called due process rights. So one of the fundamental principles of our U.S. Con Constitution, um, well, I guess it's not really a con sorry, it's really our actually is it Constitution? It's our Bill of Rights. Oh, now now I'm the now I'm the guy. Okay, well anyway, regardless, part of the deal is due process rights. They're crucial. They're part of our very fundamental American existence. That's what kind of should guide the whole justice system, due process rights. And I will tell you consistently, repeatedly, these people will do everything to reduce your due process rights. And they do it in a very sneaky way. So here's the rule. So, and then here, so if you're looking at this website, you're like, oh, this is, and just to let you know where this is coming from, 
This is their manual. So a audit manual that's from the CDTFA are their rules that they create for themselves. So what I'm trying to say very clearly is these people don't follow their own rules. So from the CDTFA perspective, you must follow their rules, but they don't need to follow their own rules. That is the, their guiding principle in practice. Obviously on paper and concept and in theory, they have other values, but in terms of practice, this is how they practice their values. So back to this audit results, okay? So we have this audit date. Now also part of this, and I, I again, I've, I've watched all the information, but it'll talk about disclosures, um, the type of business, type of transactions, books and records, reporting methods, sales, tax rule, blah, 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 blah. Okay, what I wanted to highlight and what I did not whitewash because this is not sensitive is they're supposed to put in the taxpayer position. The taxpayer position is, hey, this is our argument for why we think we are correct. I was very clear with this individual. This is my contention. This is my contention. And just to give you a little bit of background, when you are being audited by the CDTFA, there's something called evidence. Now, obviously, when we think of a court of law, there's different levels of evidence. There's a preponderance of evidence. So preponderance of evidence is 50-50. We've got a scale. And does it lean to this way or does it lean to this way? Usually in trials, we have beyond a reasonable doubt, which I believe is about 80%. So what that means is in a murder conviction, it doesn't mean that you're certain. By the way, I am not a lawyer, not a lawyer. So if I'm getting this wrong, <laughs> let me know in the comments. But but what I'm trying to say is that even in a murder trial, it's never beyond all doubt. It's beyond a reasonable doubt, okay? A reasonable doubt is eight, the 80% standard. Now, when it comes to a CDTFA audit, it's 50, can you go 51, 50, 51, 49? Or where does, where does the scale weigh? As long as it's one ounce, more than the other side, you win. And so I said, hey, your logic isn't consistent and it doesn't meet the evidentiary standards. And I told the guy consistently, this is my contention. If you're gonna apply certain assumptions and principles, then you have to apply it to a certain period, which he never did. And in addition to this, I said, write it down because so what happens is there's something called the taxpayer position, which they put in their report. These people, consistently fail to put in the taxpayer position. And I believe why that is, is to make us look like idiots. So in case the client looks at it, in case the appeals people look at it, in case it goes uh, to the uh, next level appeal, what they'll do is the, the next level person will say, well, geez, Adam, you're a schmuck. You didn't even have your taxpayer position. Your taxpayer position is, is not even existent. So what basis do you even have to stand here? And then I say, your honor, I did tell this schmuck my position. He just failed to write it down. So again, part of this process of speaking with the Gahuna, the principal auditor is to, is to correct the record. And you have this right. It is a right. By the way, when I say this is a right, this is not optional. This isn't like a nude beach where clothing is optional. These are rights. You don't take away rights. The people that enforce the law don't even know the law or they don't enforce it. In my opinion, I just think that, well, we'll get to, uh, stay tuned, I'll tell you what I think. But again, this is their manual. These are their rules, okay? You have 10 days. So look at this date. Look at this date, the letter date. August 21st. Now, let me share with you what they call their notice of determination. Uh, sorry, guys. Notice of determination. So the notice of determination is these are the final results. This is what we have identified as true. And then you go to appeal. Now, the key thing about if you disagree, once you get to here, now you have to go to appeal, which is more money, more time, more stress. So this is additional pain and suffering that the client is now going to experience because these people didn't do their damn job. Now, what you're going to notice, if you can read, if you have the ability to read, you'll see August 21st. That's the same date that they issued their final letter. So what this means is the way that they get around the whole 10-day period is they just send both 
letters the same day. And what I did is I was furious. I was furious, furious, because I believe this is intentional. This was not a mistake. This wasn't like a, oh, Adam, I'm so sorry. This was intentional. And I'll get into the background a little bit later, but no, these guys did it intentionally to circumvent rights. They do it intentionally to undermine you, the taxpayer. And this is how they do it. And I, let me just show a little emails. So what I did earlier in the day is I said, hey, per this rule, I'm requesting to speak with the principal auditor. I, I, I The guy's name, I blocked it out. His, his supervisor, I blocked it out. I cited the rule. I even put it here because this guy doesn't even know the rule. So that way he can't disagree. And so, and so what he says is, Adam, the case has been posted in bills. Please file appeals. Like, you got to be kidding me. Just, you got to be kidding me. And then we go down. And then he says, the NOD was, was batch print and sent out and blah, blah, blah. Basically, um, tough shit, deal with it. What I then did is I called the Grand Gahuna. I got her phone number. And the Grand Gahuna is on vacation. So the Grand Gahuna um has an assistant kahuna so i called her and um basically what i said is hey this is what happened and i'm like look at the dates in the system and there's like you ever just call someone and you hear this pause it's like they know they screwed up but they can't say it because of liability issues so she's like well we'll get back to you and then i'm like well what about this what about what about my um what about my rights what about my rights what about uh, being able to request this thing? She's like, well, you can't do it because now it's it's in the system. It's in the system for a notice of determination. So you have to file an appeal, which is going to cost more money, more time, more effort. Now we are going, I have filed a taxpayer advocate complaint. Um, and that is ongoing as we speak. Um, however, this is going to cost more time, more money, more aggravation, more stress. And here's the thing that I've noticed that the CDTFA does is they do this intentionally. And this has happened multiple times. So what I'm gonna do is I'll be doing some other videos that talk about how they circumvent your rights. Again, most people don't know the rules. They don't look at the rules. So therefore they don't even know what they're entitled to. And the guy's like, oh yes, ha, ha, ha. Yes, right? They're very accommodating. You know, they're, they're just nodding their head. Yes, yes. And they send you a bill. And you're like, but wait a second. I thought I had all these rights. And they're like, ha, 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 have a nice day. Have a nice day. You know, have a nice day. As they kick you in the balls. That's how they do it. Um, I'll be honest, I'm furious. And um, I've actually had this experience multiple times in this particular audit. I've spoken both with the field auditor the supervisor and this just set me off over the top because it's just so clear. It's so clear, so clear. It's like there's certain things where things have happened. It's like, well, maybe there's a misinterpretation. Maybe there's a different point of view. Maybe there's different thoughts on the matter, which are all legitimate, all legitimate. However, at a certain point, it's like, really, that's black and white. Again, what they should have done, sent the letter, waited the 10 days, allowed for this possible meeting to happen, and then... Um, sent the notice of determination. Now I do have a theory. First off, I think I have a theory. And the question is, is why do they do this? And I think it's for a couple of reasons. One is they are severely overworked. And I think in this type of case, this is kind of like the oil company that knows it's causing cancer, but they're just gonna just do it anyway because they've done the math on the amount of developing liability claims. And they've just determined that they're just gonna circumvent rights. They're gonna have to deal with it at, at, with appeals and taxpayer advocate, but whatever, it is what it is. And I think that determination was made because all taxpayers who go through these audits have the right to speak to the Grand Kahuna. Now the Grand Kahuna, also known as the principal auditor, is the manager for the whole office. So you have to manage, understand that the, the Grand Kahuna is like the CEO of this whole organization that employs, I think um, this office, there has to be dozens and dozens of employees. And this person is the CEO of, of this unit per se. And they just don't have time. That is kind of like the dirty truth of it is that the person doesn't have time. So what do they do? They circumvent rights. So the person never has to really get involved, do this. Because let's just think about it. If it, my my requesting this they have to schedule the meeting 
They have to attend the meeting and they have to think about it, or at least pretend, pretend to think about it. And then they have to write a reply because they can't just say, fuck off. They have to like do something, right? So at that point, um, it takes a lot of time. And if every taxpayer were to exercise their rights, it would result in no work being done. So then you get to this question of fair administration of justice, um, which is an interesting concept. Now on the counter side is, well, these are the rights, but on the other side, you still got to run the office. So this is kind of their solution, which I really think they should just hire more manpower and the instead of having the grand kahuna be the final say so, they should probably have somebody else be doing that function. So that way they can't, you know, do it. Now, obviously the, the excuse that I was given is, oh, it was an accident. However, there's been so many things that have been purposefully not followed in this audit that you have to assume three things. Either they're complete morons, which is possible, but I don't think so because I've met these people and they're, they're not morons. The other thing is they don't know the rules, but considering that their job is to enforce the rules, I don't think it's that one. I really think it's that they've developed a culture of selective enforcement for whatever makes their life easier. So it's about them and their job, protecting their pension, protecting their status, their job title. Again, it's not about the taxpayer, the state of California. It's really just about what's easy for them. And I think that's the silent rule that they are silently guided by is what makes life easy for them. However, you as the taxpayer do have rights and you should, you should, you should, you should exercise your rights because they exist for a reason, you know, otherwise we might as well be another country and I'm proud to be an American. To do process rights are one of the most fundamental things for justice. So um, again, if you are doing a CDTF audit, just be very aware of the final audit uh, letter and then the um, notice of determination to see if what dates that they were issued, whether they circumvented those rights. Because if you do, then you go to the taxpayer advocate and um, at the very least, they'll listen to your claim and they'll probably get in trouble. And I don't know, maybe, who knows? Probably they get a slap on their wrist, but it's in their file. And um, at least you've exercised your rights as an American. So well done. Okay. Have a great day, guys. And um, till the next one.